Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, The Inked Reader. Finally, super late, I am filming these. These are my favorite graphic novels and manga for 2022. I had started to read way more manga and graphic novels, comics in general in 2022. I had a period five years ago where I was reading a lot, especially graphic novels at the time. And then I kind of went on a hiatus and didn't read anything or barely maybe five, six in a year for a bunch of years. And in 2022, I felt like it was the right time to go back into reading them i found out amazing series like series that now will stuck with me forever and i also think that my 2022 was a very positive year in terms of reading and the manga especially i must say where probably the main reason why i enjoyed like my reading experience throughout 2022 so much so i kind of vouched to keep that trend of reading way more graphic novels and manga in general i really love reading just manga i really love reading graphic novels, just digesting stories in another format. I will always read books, of course, but I kind of like the kind of change of medium in which you consume a story, if it makes sense. So without further ado, I'm gonna go through from the 10th place to the 1st place. I must say, though, in general, I think I read around 62 and 68 total graphic novels and manga volumes I've read. However, I noticed that I've read many volumes in one series, so that has to be taken into account. I've probably read like 30 things singularly, but the other 30th were probably just follow-ups volumes, if it makes sense. And finally, some manga had deluxe editions, so I acquired the deluxe editions, which contains usually three volumes on average, so I consider that as one volume only, but technically it would be way more if it makes sense. The only rule for these is that you can't have more than one volume from the same thing, if it makes sense. So each of these 10 are different series, but that's the only rule. And yeah, if you've been following me, probably you already know what's <laughs> at the top places, so it's not gonna be a big surprise. Finally, if you're new, again, I do read books and I do read comics, so, and I do reviews and TBRs for both separately, so I would love for you to subscribe if you're new. And just, yeah, have a chat with me in the comments and so on. So without further ado, at number 10, we have volume two of Lore Olympus. Now, I thought I read the first volume of these in 2022 also, but no, actually I just read this one. And now this one is, first of all, the art. Let me introduce you to one of the most stellar color palette and art style that I personally have experienced in 2022. I'm just gonna show you the first page, so it's not a spoiler. This is a series that initially started as a webtoon, so I still believe that you can find the whole series for free online. However, I do love these editions, so I'm gonna just keep buying it, and I also want to support the author. This is a fantasy Greek retelling of the myth of Hades and Persephone. And at the beginning of this, they don't know each other. Persephone is very young and naive, and Hades is Hades, and he's having a rough day. And then they just meet, and they are total apart, opposite. Their lives are very different, but then they kind of click. And while the plot, I think it's kind of set already for us, like if you know the myth and if she respects the myth, which we still don't know, I don't know personally, we know, we know where this is going. But yeah, I am enjoying the journey so much. You follow other Greek gods in these, and I think there is a perfect combination of amazing art style with a lot of cuteness, at the same time though tackling very difficult topics. And the way that this is handled is very delicate and that's why I love it so much. It's honestly, like every time I open a volume, it's a fluffy, warm feeling in my chest. It's an amazing experience. And for someone who doesn't really care much these days about romance plot lines, I'm actually stunned myself that I love this so much. Because I didn't think, and yeah, maybe if the fact that I do love Greek myths helps, <laughs> it could be. But I think also that she does proper trigger warnings for all the content that might be triggering in these and I really respect the author. I just want to support her, I just love her content. It's always a place where I can go and I know I will have a good time. And that's something that is valuable for me, like I cherish a lot of those series that are just feel good series, if it makes sense. At number nine I have I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. This is the complete manga collection and can we appreciate the stunning visuals that these 
manga is. I'm gonna show you some of the art, just the first page, so it doesn't contain any spoilers. And again, this is another um, surprising pick for me because this again is not really a romance, but it's a contemporary manga following these boy and a girl that kind of form this friendship while at all times they know that the girl is about to die from a pancreatic disease. So you know from the start that this is gonna end in tragedy and I never thought I would care that much about such a story and I also thought that this while taking a very youthful stance um, and a very youthful approachable dialogue, style of dialogue basically, it was very much tailored for teens. It was very easily um, accessible in a sense. I also thought that he went into depth using such plain and yet effective writing to give the message of you know what is important in life and what are the things we should cherish more in life and I appreciate this all heartedly such a stunning heartbreaking and yet heartwarming story and how it made you see the light in a very deeply dark disturbing story fundamentally and I really appreciate it for that, not to mention the art, it was brilliant. So I just picked it up because I saw this in Waterstone and it's just like, this looks amazing, I've heard people talking very well about this, it's not really my cup of tea in general, but I'm so glad that I kind of take a plunge and just went and read it, I didn't regret it at all, I absolutely loved it and now I understand the hype. At number eight we have Vinland Saga, I've just read the first two books of Vinland Saga and I must say that both of them kind of go at the same place. I loved them differently. I think while this was very introductory for me, the second volume solidified my intention of actually, yes, I want to read all of it. No surprise that it's a very popular manga. It's containing these beautiful editions where I guess there are two to three volumes inside. I am not so sure. I don't care that much. To be fair, I'm gonna collect them in these editions. I'm gonna show you the art from the first. First volume, first page. So it's not much of a spoiler, if it makes sense. I hope it's centered. Yes, it is. And this is a historical fiction. Thus far, it's just historical fiction manga, which is my first trial of a historical fiction manga that thus far doesn't have any fantasy elements. It's a story of this boy, he is raised by the enemy, basically the enemy is taking place like during Viking era and you follow this boy whose father is killed by this other group of Vikings after he had retired and he didn't want to fight anymore, he just had put up a family, just minded his own business and then war comes. So he has to kind of take up arms one more time and he ends up being killed by this enemy and this boy is then adopted by this enemy, the guy that actually killed his father. So he grows up in this very conflicting environment where he hates his caretaker because he witnessed the homicide of his father the killing of his father while at the same time he is depending on them and relying on them to survive and learn the skills to actually you know be a good fighter and so on and it's a very well detailed story i think the amount of research that these men must have done in order to make this it's stunning what i absolutely loved is that some of these characters really get under your skin and there were some very powerful scenes that absolutely just stuck with me, I can still picture the panel in my mind and I don't know how to express it, I don't know if it's love or just poor admiration but I feel like this pull toward this series just kind of going round and round in my mind and I feel like this pull of wanting to continue reading, wanting to find out what's next some of these characters are absolutely hilarious but one also, one thing that they do I love first of all this conflict that the main character has about growing up with your enemy and also I think that the enemy the guy that you know kills the father and then takes care of his is such a clever, such a clever um, nemesis. Is such a clever character that you, I kind of admire him while at the same time being very aware of how awful and how you know kind of sociopath he is in a sense. So I'm, I'm, so I'm just in awe of what is being created, and I very much do have high hopes for the future of this series. I've got The Sandman and specifically volume 4. Now this is an exception because when I was putting this video together for a while I didn't think I was gonna put The Sandman in and then I remembered this volume and I just said yes okay I need to put this in. I'm gonna show you some of the art from again the first page but I want to be very specific that uh, this includes only 
uh, but this includes only volume four like I didn't love and I wouldn't have put the other three volumes that I read in this compilation if it makes sense I just thought volume four was deserving of it I think volume four thus far is my favorite ultimately favorite of the series I've read half of it so I'm halfway through so we will see if other volumes can topple this one but these plot especially just connected with me a lot and then The Sandman is by Neil Gaiman is a very popular horror fantasy graphic novel that now has been translated also in a tv show which I watched I'm gonna talk about that in what I've watched recently. Anyway, go back to these. So these especially, without giving any spoilers, I was a lot of the volumes in this saga, what I noticed is that they are semi-self-contained. So you might have recurring characters, but then the plot they go through is very different. And in this specific plot, you have a um, plot that takes place in hell. So a big change comes to hell, like a major change comes to hell and Morpheus, our main protagonist, has to deal with it. The premise of the whole saga is that you follow Morpheus, the god of dreams, that after being captured and held captive for decades, is finally able to set himself free and had to go and fix a lot of issues that raised from his entrapment and also kind of rebuild his kingdom. But yeah, volume 4 specifically, I love it just the plot, I love the discussion and somehow, although I'm not religious myself, I grew up in a religious family and so the plot that has to do with hell and heaven is something that's very familiar to me because of, you know, the doctrine that I grew up with and the school and, you know, I come from Italy, so where you study religion in school, for example. So it's something that fascinates me, although, again, I'm not religious. So yeah, love this plot, love the idea of this happening and, you know, what do you do with this? So I really enjoyed overall the journey we go on on this particular volume. Number six I've got Preacher and specifically volume five, book five actually, which contains two volumes of a normal series. Preacher is the premise of a graphic novel, I'll show you the art. And this is a graphic novel, it's the story of Jesse. Jesse is a preacher clearly from the title. During the first volume actually he is bestowed upon immense powers, powers that are similar to God's power basically. But God is nowhere in sight. So he finds himself in our modern world with all its problems and he decides that he needs to go and find God and hold him accountable for all the shit where we are going through as humans and all the shit that we have done to each other when we keep doing to each other and so it's kind of this anti-hero if you want it's very blasphemous and it's very violent as a series extremely violent if you are sensible if you're someone who's very religious and sensible to that I wouldn't pick this up uh, it goes there, it goes into the nitty gritty of faith and what faith means to humans. Book two is still my favorite uh, ever. It's probably one of my favorite graphic novels ever, book number two, which contains probably volume three and four of a normal run because you get the back story of Jesse. You see kind of the origin story of Jesse. But, but this year I finished it and uh, it was a very preacher ending, but it wasn't exactly as I wished. But this volume, which precedes the actual final book, book six that finished the whole series, was amazing. Uh, all of the good things I loved about Preacher in the other books prior to these were in there up a notch though and it was just exactly what I wanted. I think Preacher is a very good graphic novel if you are into grim dark fantasies. However, it's, it's a fantasy in a sense because of course you've got gods and demons and all of that so there is definitely an element of fantasy but I think the, the grim darkness is translated very well in a modern setting and I just love it. I love how out there this is. It's a unique series. It reminds me, if I have to compare these to a series, there is a TV show of this on Amazon, I believe, but I never continued on after a few episodes. I don't know why I might try. But actually, the series that goes... That I would compare this to in sense of how much out there it is, is the boys on Amazon Prime. Like that's the, uh, that's the amount of violence and out in your face content that this would be comparable to, 
in my opinion. The only Junji Ito on this list, although I read other stuff by him and really enjoyed, uh, No Longer Human, which is actually an adaptation into manga from this novel, uh, which is semi autobiographical. I've not read the actual novel, but I acquired it as soon as I finished this one. And this is the story of this man that basically spends his life trying to be accepted by others by playing the clown in the situation, just always being funny in order to be accepted. But within himself, he feels very empty. And you see him spiral down this kind of struggle within himself of trying to please others and at the same time retrieving from society more and more. And he was wild. I'm gonna show you the art, although it's classical Junji Ito art, but this is one of the few Junji Ito that I really love the ending and I guess because it's not actually his story in a sense. I don't want to be mean uh, because I do love Junji Ito's mind. I honestly do love his mind, but sometimes I struggle with his endings. I think they are the kind of vague endings, interpreted endings that don't always, always work for me in my horror. In this case it did work well, but I guess against the ending of a novel actually. It was just extremely captivating, it was a very fascinating story that I found very raw, very disturbing and I think that's what I want when I read a horror manga, be disturbed, being uncomfortable while reading it, feeling like if I was in that story I would definitely feel the eeriness, the creepiness of all the situation and definitely this came through and I also found that this protagonist was particularly, I don't know, lifelike? It was particularly, it's, it's something that I can imagine someone actually going through. Of course not in the, you know, horrorish way that this person does but in that kind of distinction and distortion of reality and how you see yourself. So I really really loved these. I think it's one of the best Junji Ito I've read so far. Very solid horror. Very solid horror without a lot of food for thoughts in a sense and being extremely sinister while being... it's not like body horrorish as other of his stuff. Definitely not. Um, it's way more mundane if you want, more simple, but I found these uh, stuck with me sometimes more than some of his body horror. Said that I still love Ito, will always read Ito, but this particularly hit the mark for me. At number four we have The Me You Love in the Dark. By This is by Scotty Young who actually wrote I Hate Fairyland, which is a quartet of graphic novels that I adore. And this one in particular is I think a standalone potentially, however is the sequel to another series that I need to check out. First of all the art. The art is amazing. I don't want to spoil anything, just it's Scotty Young and if you've not checked out Scotty Young and you like graphic novels, what are you doing with your life? You need to check out Scotty Young. I adore him and while um, I Hate Fairyland was very violent but very fluffy and funny, this is way more horrorish and it's way more dark in a sense. Although there is a dark spin to I Hate Fairyland, this is way more in your face. This is clearly a horror genre, uh, if it makes sense. This is the story of this girl, she is an artist, has been stuck though, she has kind of lost her inspiration to create new material, new art, and so she decides to rent this abandoned house, kind of, like this creepy Victorian era house, go there and just focus on her art. And so she does, she goes there and the shadows take shape, the shadows slowly become something and she starts speaking with that something. To be a standalone it's extremely rewarding as a story and I don't want to give out any spoilers, however I think this is something very remarkable that must be said and I think the way these portrays in a horrorish fantastical way if you want, a very toxic relationship was so well done that I rarely encountered a toxic relationship done so, so truthfully, so real to life in a fantastical horrorish world basically where you know you're not just following like it's not contemporary about toxic relationship, it's clearly a horror fantasy but it depicts still uh, a very real toxic relationship. And so I love that for that, I love the content, I loved how this is handled. It's done clearly, simply, effectively, with mm, amazing art, with that touch of horror and creepiness that I needed. It was perfect, five stars, honestly like from now on, like every, everything on this list I adored, but especially you know from No Longer Humans onward, I can't, I just have praises, I don't have any issue with 
all of these things I'm about to talk and this is including in there I think it's perfection I wouldn't change one bit about these things at number three three we have Dorodoro uh, volume one now this is a bit of an exception because all the other series in this thing apart from the standalone graphic novels I just mentioned where other parts of you know a volume that I particularly liked in a whole series or were actually the start of a series that I end up overall lobbying like Vinland Saga for example. This is the only series that I've just read one volume because unfortunately volume two had sold out everywhere but now I found it so stay tuned for my next wrap-ups and it's the only one that in the short amount of pages I managed to get on this list as probably ultimate favorite <laughs> for, for now at least with just one volume and it's not even a chunky volume it's a very simple short volume I loved Toredoro I saw the no I didn't see but I kind of saw the advertisement for the um, anime on Netflix and never actually checked it out because it was like oh, it doesn't sound like my thing I'm a moron I'm a moron I will never trust myself ever again because I adored the manga. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read all the manga and then check out the anime. I heard amazing things about the anime, but I am loving the manga and I wanna consume this story this way first. This world is basically, you call the hole, which is this horrible place to live where dark sorcerers use humans for experiments. And the way these experiments often turn out is that these humans are transformed into half animals or animals. And our main protagonist, he has the body of a lizard and the head of a man, but he doesn't remember who he is, what happened to him. And so the idea behind is that he wants to find out the sorcerer that did this to him, get answers and go back to his normal body. And it's just fucking nuts. I adored it. I adored how weird this was, how violent this was and how also intriguing because it's a word that's well explained to you but that you are left with so many questions to be answered. You are left with so many how, why, it's not confusing which is, ex I don't know how to explain how something that you know so little about is not confusing because it's well explained to you but there are so many mysteries to discover throughout that keeps you captivated, that keeps you kind of glued to the pages. I couldn't put this down, I had to finish in one go. Everything worked perfectly. I can't explain very well what genre and what this does because it's one so unique that I think you can only make up your mind um, on what exactly this is. I'm gonna probably what I'm gonna try to do is read a few volumes and maybe do like spoilery discussions about Doradoro, I might do that because I think I adore this enough to justify these uh, discussions like I did for Berserk for example. I'm gonna be able to continue on. Can't wait to keep going with this. At number two we have, without any surprise from everybody, because if you follow my channel you know this is coming. And honestly this almost went to number one, you understand why it couldn't, but it's it's very, it's basically number one, uh, together with my number one, is Chainsaw Man. I discovered Chainsaw Man and loved Chainsaw Man <laughs> in 2022 so bloody much. I adore Denji, I adore the mind of this man. I was discussing the plot of Fire Punch, another series by him, to someone, and they were like, What the? F like, and yes, I was like, This man, this is the kind of mind this man has. And this is the story of Denji. Denji is an abandoned child, basically raises himself, does some odd jobs for the mobs, and it's him and his pet dog, Pochita. I think you pronounce Pochita, I don't know. So he's just him and this dog trying to make ends meet by doing odd jobs and one day though he's set up by this mafia boss that he works for and he's killed. However, he doesn't really die. Something, Pochita does something and he comes back to life but now he's Chainsaw Man so he's able to transform into a demon and in this world there are demons that have very fascinating powers and there is an agency that he is gonna end up eventually working for that kind of finds the demons that you know are a threat to public to the public and kills them and it's crazy like it's again it's another nut series I think Doradoro and Chainsaw Man are those series that you can only read and then when you read them, you realize that probably you don't have enough vocabulary, or maybe you have, I don't have enough vocabulary or the correct vocabulary to describe how, what this series actually is. I'm gonna show you the art. 
but I think what is worth mentioning of this series is the amount of amazing demons and the fight scenes and also like the mind of these men coming up with these kind of plots and these kind of subplots and these demons have all these kind of different powers that, you know, the cherry on the cake though is our main protagonist, Denji. I've never met a character like him, maybe because I've not read many manga, maybe it's more common than I thought, but in my own experience, a character that is poorly naive, like he doesn't try to be particularly deep, he doesn't try to be particularly mature, he's someone who is never educated, he's grown up on his own, not knowing much, and he's pretty dumb and um, gullible, and so you kind of see him staying this way and mature very slowly though, very slowly and realistically, he's still very dumb when you've read <laughs> volume 11, and yet you can see though the change in it, then you can see actually that how he's na been naive doesn't mean that he's weak and he actually, how he transformed this thing is in one of his bigger strengths and I don't know, I adored him. First of all, it was hilarious, like all he thinks about is our boobs and I didn't think initially that reading about a guy that was just thinking about touching boobs would be my cup kind of thing. If I was told how Denji was without the context or without reading about him, I would probably just slap this guy off, like, yo, you don't want to read about that. But actually, I did, I wanted to read about him because he's not just, I don't know, he's not just lascivious or he's not just creepy, he does in a way that makes sense for his character, so I don't kind of, you know, I found him hilarious how he's with the girls and I just, I don't know, I really, really cherish Denji and I think it probably comes a bit with my nurture and nature where you can just see this boy who had nothing, grew up with nothing and grew up with nothing and he, you know people take advantage of him and you just want to take care of him even if you know he just thinks about boobs in a sense so I really adored him and I think this is gonna make an amazing anime I'm gonna watch the anime very soon because I need to know how this translates into an animation but I will continue on for sure Chainsaw will stay in my heart is definitely for now one of my ultimate favorite everything pretty much on this list especially these three top three places um in terms of manga because spoiler alert the first one is a manga as well <laughs> number one these ones have kind of become the goat for me for now and then at number one you all know what's coming because i've done spoiler review on my channel for it i've talked every month about this because i started in 2022 and i never read it before I acquired the deluxe editions and kind of powered through the series and number one is berserk it just couldn't be anything else right so berserk changed my reading my life as a reader there is life before Berserk and there is life now after Berserk. Yeah, that's how much of an impact this had on me. Now here I'm just holding volume one and I can't show you that. Definitely not, because it starts with a bang. It starts with a bang. And now that I'm opening volume one to show you and see the difference of the art. It's, it's crazy guys. I can't wait to actually reread this eventually and just digest it a second time. Because the art did change and that's something that I've I've kind of talked about. It doesn't change massively, but it really improves. And so what happened is I read 12 volumes of Berserk, 12 of the deluxe editions, which brings me to 36 volumes. So in 2022, technically speaking, I've read 36 volumes of Berserk. Devoured. I devoured Berserk. Berserk is definitely considered one of the goats. Um, I've found forums online, websites where he's one. It's considered one of the goats. It's the greatest of all time. And there is a good reason for that. I'm definitely on the same boat with all the other people that consider this one of the goat. And if I have to give you a premise, because this is so much more than anything I could ever say in a couple of sentences, but this is a grim dark fantasy. And it's the story of this man. In the very first volume, you found this man injured and imprisoned, and he is on a path of seeking revenge for whoever did that to him. And I'm gonna just leave it at that. What happens is that pretty soon in the volumes you go back to the origin story of Guts, so our main protagonist. You see how he becomes what he becomes and how what led him to them being in prison in the very first volume and seeking revenge and what he's looking for. And it's a very convoluted, if you want, plot for that it's not difficult to follow. So it's a layered story with a lot of depth to its main protagonist 
and it's a series that takes its time with its characters. You have arcs within this uh, manga series and each arc takes its time to develop the story of these characters and I think that's what Miura does perfectly. Not to mention the amazing stellar art, the amazing imagination of this man in creating this world, these demons, the fight scenes where are very clear and neat, which is rare because a lot of manga I read when there are fight scenes, you don't understand what's going on, while here it always stays, the quality always stays so good that you can always have a pretty clear idea of who is doing what, who is killing what and how. But apart from that he creates the perfect duo, he creates the perfect, actually trio, let's say that, he creates a dynamic between these three main protagonists, which Guts is the main protagonist, yes, but I would argue that Griffith and Casca are the other two, and you got this triangle of people that grow up together in a sense and reach a point in their life when, you know, I'm now volume 12, so almost to, I'm starting like the last arc that is out now, where all their choices make so much sense because you've grown up with them and so he creates also like the perfect and complex and toxic and devastating relationships between these characters that just it breaks you there is every arc as kind of like a peak at the end so every arc has a big moment and the ending of the golden age arc will forever be branded <laughs> burned into my mind. I've never... has been ages, years, since I had such an emotional reaction to anything I was reading. I can't describe, like, I was honestly upset. I was honestly walking around. I had to go out for a walk. But the fact that this actually created a physical, a physical reaction and at a peak of emotions within me just made me realize how good this man is at doing what he does. Now Miura has passed away but the series has been continued on by a dear friend of his and Miura was able to tell the friend for what I gather from your own comments um, how he had envisioned the story to end so we will reach an end eventually but I could never describe properly my journey with Berserk and only wish you know for other people to experience the same said that there is a lot of warning content warning that you might want to check out there is very heavy content especially the sexual content and the sexual violence is very heavy in the series and i think if you are someone who hates sexual content and can't go past that fair enough it's your own choice so you might want to stay clear of that if you're okay with that i am not okay with that in a sense but i kind of digested the story setting aside while keeping them in mind though some of my critiques on that thing and realize that this is very much like it's a very it's a kind of oldish series and this man is the product of his time so i'm not justifying his actions but i understand why he does what he does with his plot and his characters why there is the violence that there is because there is an ultimate purpose that it's showing us you know the most evil things human can get up to and so I understood his motivations, while at the same time I don't particularly like going through that process, I understand that this is his creations and I can take it, I can leave it. Personally, I'm so happy that I continued on. But yes, there is the element that you might be, you know, that might not be for you and that's okay. But if you can put up with that, Berserk is a unique experience in life that I, if you're a reader, especially a manga reader, you probably, if you're a manga reader, you probably already know this, but if you want to try and you're okay with the content and the trigger warnings in these, this is an experience you want, trust me. So thank you guys for watching, whoa, that's heavy. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what is your favorite goat of all time and let's check back in a few years time. But let me know also what was your favorite read of 2022. I would love to get your recommendations down below. Uh, as you can see, I'm... Um, you know, expanding uh, my reading taste and expanding the kind of graphic novels and manga I want to check out. If you're new, again, I do put TBRs and wrap-ups just for the manga and graphic novels every month. So, you know, I would love for you to subscribe. Let's chat in the comments down below. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Ciao!